Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday we covered Mr. Fix for Call and we looked at how brilliant he was at fixing the troubles of the country. Today we're going to look at Mr. Shut Up himself. Yeah, and, and the reason why we're talking about Biggie Taylor is because in Parliament, after the State of the Nation address, there was a post-Sona debate. And this is what Biggie Taylor had to say. Want to hear you apologizing. Apologizing to abuse a young woman who came to work in your office and was a wife of your colleague and you took that wife of your colleague you divorced your own wife and you took that young you took that young girl she's your wife today but the women around you are quiet are not saying anything and you come in this podium you talk about gender-based violence so you better go Minister. and fix yourself Minister. if not now, now, Ramon, I know you uh, you watched this uh, clip and we had a little chuckle about it because obviously we all know the story of John Stianazen, uh making ours with uh, Mrs. Bermont, the current wife of John Stianazen, who was actually the wife at the time of Michael Beaumont, which for those of you who don't understand why Action SA and the DA don't get on very well is because John stole Michael's wife. So this is basically what Becky Seller is referring to. With that being said, I know that when I looked at the clip at the time, and I know you weren't terribly fond of this idea, I'm just reading body language and I'm making no allegations, but he looks kind of drunk and he doesn't look like he's very coherent with his words. I actually put a question out on Twitter where I said, Becky Seller always looks drunk. Does anyone have like more information? And there were a lot of people that said, no, no, he's just a worse. That's how he looks anyway. But one person said, no, he hates alcohol because his son was an alcoholic. And that's why he actually hates it. So as far as we know, Becky Taylor is a teetotaler, but not in a very persuasive way. I mean, you wouldn't think he's a teetotaler just based on his dance moves. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, Ms. Minister Becky Taylor has some moves. Unfortunately, those moves aren't around policing in the country which is the thing that he's responsible for. Maybe he should be Minister of Dancing, mate. Well, I mean, let's be honest. We're going to have a Minister of Electricity, so we just need also a Minister of Potholes, a Minister of Dancing as well, I suppose, and Becky Tele can be that. He's certainly not the Minister of the Loudspeaker, because even loudspeakers, inanimate objects, don't regard him very well. But we mustn't forget, he is, in fact, the Minister of Police. So I think it's important to understand, Tepikitele was never a police officer, right? He has a degree in, like, nursery school teaching or something like that, or primary education, whatever they call it these days. And unfortunately, he talks to the police as if they morons and idiots, for the most part. I mean, just check out how he talks to people in this particular clip. Tomorrow, starting from yesterday, today, tomorrow and after, your job is to enforce the law. Anything, anybody that gets out of the way, you must make sure that you put that person back on space so that tomorrow and thereafter, the situation and the event is given the dignity that it deserves. Somebody really didn't teach Mr. Mr. Nursery School teacher uh, Tom, did they? The idea of past and future tense, which possibly explains the level of education in this country, if this is the level of teachers we have. Yeah, and as uh, Fiki Limbalula said yesterday, people must go back to school. And we agree. I think Bekitele must go back to school, despite the fact that he has a teaching degree, which is inherently... Uh, very, very ironic. And if children must go back to work, just like Fikila said yesterday, which child would be a better police commissioner? And I think practically all of it, because at least they would know what a baddie looks like, right? For those of you who aren't aware, the EFF stormed the president's uh, State of the Nation address and Becky Zeller came out and he said, well, we removed him because you know, we do have experiences of prime ministers being killed in South Africa on the parliamentary floor. We have a history in this country where the prime minister was killed inside the chambers, inside the house. So we're not going to wait too much to see if there is blood flowing or not. 
I find it really weird that he's drawing reference to this individual and he wants it not to be a repeat event in Parliament. Some historical research shows us that the individual he's actually drawing reference to is, he is Hendrik Vervoet, the architect of apartheid. Yeah, the literal architect of apartheid. So people smile and laugh when they hear that Henry Fubert was actually killed, was actually assassinated in Parliament. But Becky Tele thinks it's a terrible idea that Henry Fubert was killed in Parliament and he doesn't want to repeat of that. <laughs> Somebody taught this guy this piece of history and he's like, oh yeah, that's a great piece of history. Like a, a PM died on the on the parliamentary floor. We don't want that to happen, do we? No, Mr. Minister Becky Tele, we definitely don't want the Prime Minister responsible for the the creation of apartheid killed on parliamentary floor, do we? I mean, that would be terrible, right? Yeah, and besides, we don't have prime ministers anymore in South Africa. We have presidents because we, you know, have democracy now, which allows people like mediocrities, like Becky Tele, to become ministers. But I think it's important to note that, you know, whenever Becky Tele is obviously publicly seen as an absolute moron, he does the only thing that Auntie knows what to do, which is to say that his mother was a kitchen girl and that uh, he fought apartheid and therefore he knows absolutely everything. And everyone who disagrees with him must actually shut up. As the famous clip featuring Ian Cameron will show you. And I'm not going to take any nonsense of somebody who regards me as a garden boy today because you regard me as a garden boy. You come here, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I sat here, I sat here, I listened to you. I sat here, I listened to you talking nonsense. Listen, it's your time to listen. Sit down and listen, young man. Oh, get out! Oh, get out! And as you can see, this is the Minister of Police, ladies and gentlemen, speaking to a sort of crime fighter in Ian Cameron, who's actually doing a lot of good work for Action Society and for solving crime in the Western Cape. So not only, not only does the man have the intellectual maturity of a toddler, he's got the degree to back it up as well. Yeah, but let's face it. I mean, look, one of the problems that Minister Bekisele has is that he doesn't really understand the law. He also doesn't really understand the constitutional democracy that he attempts to pretend to protect. As we can see from this clip here, where he's addressing the Western Cape police officers around keeping Parliament safe. We are policing under the constitutional dispensation. We are policing under human rights. But that does not mean that you will not follow your constitution. And it's very clear, at the end of the day, your duty is to enforce the law. And so one of the things that you see from this is that often he is going around the country and pretending to enforce laws that basically don't exist. This is an individual that doesn't really seem to understand the very law that he is responsible in protecting. With leadership like this, one has to wonder, how is there even still a SAPS? So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, this is the National Minister of Police, the man who has completely destroyed the National South African Police Service. He treats them like morons. He doesn't drink, but he looks very drunk. And then he accuses the leader of the opposition of gender-based violence for marrying someone he loves. This is not someone who deserves praise or position or power or influence. And unfortunately, in the ANC, the retarded get to positions of power rather easily. So the only solution for South Africa, other than for Becky Tele to go, is to dissolve SAPS entirely and build it up at a local level. That's the only way it's actually going to work. That's the only way that we can actually have some form of national policing service. But of course, it's not going to happen because then Becky Tele will have to go back to being a school teacher to five-year-olds where he belongs.